Dr. Quinn, thank you, as always, for being with us. So obesity, not a new problem for China, but uh, one that actually did surprise me. What more do we know about the accessibility of the drug there? Well, right now, Ozempic, and it's being called the wonder drug by the Chinese population, as it is all over the world, because it really, really works as far as helping people better control their blood glucose levels, but also helping people to get to a healthier weight. Now, Ozempic, I just want to clarify, is not um, FDA approved in the United States for um, weight loss. It's approved for diabetes, but the same ingredient, the semaglutide, is FDA approved um, in the form of Wagovi. That's the name for weight loss. Now, in China, it's only authorized for diabetes. So what's happening is a lot of the individuals in the Chinese population, they're getting the drug falsely by going online and attesting that they have diabetes falsely when they don't have diabetes and they're getting this medicine. But there's a big concern that the people that have diabetes are unable to get this medicine because there's such a shortage in supply. But also there's a concern that some people may be getting it falsely by stating they have diabetes, but maybe they have a very low BMI, maybe they have other contraindications that are not being revealed online because they're falsifying information and it puts them in a dangerous situation. Is that same thing, Doctor, happening here in the U.S.? I mean, are we running the risk of a short supply for the same reasons? Most definitely. Um, th the bottom line is the FDA, they have really uh, strict guidelines based on research for safety. and. When you get this type of medication, you want to go to a medical provider that's licensed, that's experienced, that understands the risk and the benefits so that they can evaluate you and make sure that, number one, the medicine is safe, and number two, it can be effective for you. But what's happening is a lot of people are getting this medicine uh, in ways that are not going through the normal channels. So number one, it's making it so that there's less available for people that really need it, but also some people are getting it in ways that they're they're getting it on internets they're borrowing it from other people it's just it's, it's it's just really bad right now and a lot of these people are getting it where it's not given in the right dosage which can be very dangerous but also you know as i just can't overemphasize the importance of getting it to the people that really need it during the shortage uh, of this medication right so there are some inherent risks we also know the demand for the drug being driven by people who are willing to pay out of pocket and not go through insurance for it uh, one way to lose weight um, that has worked for a lot of people is diet and exercise exercise being the key in this next study some new research suggests women see greater health benefits from exercise even though they generally work out less than men do one benefit includes a 30 percent lower risk of dying from cardiovascular issues such as heart attack or stroke where as men who exercised had an 11 percent lower risk so what would you consider uh, regular exercise how much in a week and what does that exercise look like for women particularly to get this benefit Right. Now, this was a really good study because they looked at 412,000 people on the health interview survey to come up with these conclusions. And what was determined was women have increased health benefits from exercise than men do if they do the same amount of exercise. And even in the study, it noted that women that did less exercise even got uh, more benefits than men in some cases. Now, right now, it's being recommended that men and women re exercise 150 minutes per week. That's about 30 minutes a day, five days a week. But with this type of information, now we are able to rethink that. Should we have different recommendations for men and women? Because if women don't have to exercise as much, and I just want to note that there were three things that were noted that was rationale why women gain more benefit. Number one, it was noted that women have a higher prevalence of blood vessels or capillaries in their muscles, which would increase blood supply, giving more benefit to exercise. Women have a higher level of estrogen, which increases uh, blood supply, giving a higher benefit to exercise. And lastly, women typically, according to this study, have a lower baseline of fitness. So if a woman exercises for 30 minutes, she's going to exert herself more and she's going to get more benefit because the more intensity you put into your exercise, the more you'll benefit. So the, the, the relevance to all this is 
women have a tighter schedule than men typically, and the study did note this. Women, we take their, I'm saying we, our women, they're taking care of the babies, they're cleaning the houses. They're, some women are working two jobs. A lot of women are taking care of elderly parents. Women's schedules are much harder, and it could be discouraging when you say, you know, we want you to exercise 30 minutes a day. They might not be able to get it in schedule, but if we can decrease the number of minutes required for women to get those same benefits, now it's more realistic, and maybe we can get everybody exercising more and get to that health that we all deserve. All right. Does the body good? A little cardio, some weight training, uh, good for everybody. Squeeze it in when you can. And a lot of those activities you mentioned are exercise, taking care of kids, elderly folks, working two jobs cleaning the house. Uh, Dr. Quinn, always good to see you. Thank you for your time, sir. Hey, thank you for having me. All right, calling in the national.